I'm Lynette Zhang, Chief Market Analyst here at ITM Trading, a full service physical gold and silver dealer specializing in custom strategies. And never has that been more important than right now. Because much as the revolution be, that began back in 2000, actually before 2008 on a global basis, well, and then when, when we were bringing things in more locally, well, all that has changed and they are pushing us back toward globalization. And really, it gives corporations a huge advantage. So we're going to talk about that today, since the G7 tax deal is a starting point on a road to global reform. Now, you may think that this is only about corporations, but you know, once the tax man cometh, he cometh for everybody. However, we'll just stay here for the moment. Now, on the bottom, I'm going to show you how this has been to the benefit of corporations and, and continues to be at this point. Down here is the tax rate. So you can see that the U.S., which is right here, is at about a 21% tax rate at the moment. And let's see. There are all of those higher tax rate countries. It's still lower than what you and I pay, but okay. These are the lower tax rate countries. The size of the bubbles dictates the movement of the profits from the higher tax rate jurisdiction to the lower tax rate jurisdiction. That increases the profit per, per employee, particularly when those rates fall below 10%, and here's 10% here. So you can see that. Now, do the employees see much of that? Mm, no. Right now, because it's there's such a challenge in hiring people, oh, the employees are getting a little bit more. But this is what's enabled all of that income inequality. And, you know, I've got to say that this is not going to be stopping anytime soon. But with Janet Yellen, our Treasury Secretary, who was the head of the Federal Reserve, I'm going to just read this whole piece. Asked how she would sell the deal to U.S. legislators, Yellen said it would provide a level of certainty to corporations in the U.S. and globally about what the environment is they'll be operating in, and that environment has been very unstable because, wow, taxes going up, taxes going down. What happened before? Corporations, you might remember this, wasn't that long ago. Corporations just accumulated their profits in a lower tax jurisdiction. And then once President Trump gave them that super low tax, then they brought it all back. That has actually happened in the past too. 2005, this was what, 2017, 18. But she hailed the revival of multilateralism. Let's go for that globalization. Let's just make sure it's one big world that the central banks, the IMF, can control and the Bank for International Settlements that the bankers can control. Sounds like a deal to me. What I've seen during my time at this G7 meeting is a deep collaboration and desire to coordinate and address a much broader range of global problems, Yellen said. That they've been creating much that they have been creating. So you have to be aware of that because I'm thinking that this is opening the door to not just global taxation for the corporations, which of course the consumers are going to be paying anyway, but it could also be opening the door to global taxation on everybody, period. And by the way, since we're talking about this here, the U.S. is the only country that even if you are a U.S. citizen, no matter where you live in the world, you're still paying U.S. taxes. Just saying. Now, at the same time, 
Jenny Ellen's been very busy this week because she says higher interest rates would be a plus for the U.S. and for the Fed. Oh, really? Yes, because after all, we've been fighting inflation that's too low. See, we need more inflation. And what that really means is the value, the purchasing power value of the U.S. dollar is too high. They're taking it down. That's why you need gold. They're taking it down. Inflation that's too low and interest rates that are too low now for a decade. More than a decade. And who did all of that, by the way? Never own responsibility. The former Fed chair said, adding that we want them to go back to a normal interest rate environment. Well, why would they want them to go back to a normal interest rate environment? It's so they could lower them again in the next crisis. They want the rates up because the next thing they do when they lower them is into negative rates. And that's been, you know, pushing on a string. We talked about that last week that, you know, in those repo markets, that's already been happening. And if this helps a little bit to alleviate things, then that's not a bad thing. And exactly what things she doesn't go into, because I don't think this alleviates things, but that's a good thing. Really, really. Well, this is the mountain of debt through, this is through 2020, the pandemic debt. And we know that it's going up higher. I mean, President Biden has a $4 trillion annual budget deficit set, et cetera. So I'm not sure that they can afford to have interest rates go up to service all of this debt. And by the way, that's us, that's taxpayers that are responsible for that. That's the piece that people never really think about, that when government spends money, the money they're really spending is yours and mine. Taxes have to go up. They have to go up to pay for all of this. Can we afford those higher tax pay, those higher interest rates? Because this is the other piece. I didn't put a graph in here, but I've shown it before and I'll talk to you about it. When we run deficits, what they're saying is we're not paying this much in principal, let alone all of the interest on top of it. So that the interest goes into those deficits and we're compounding interest. A while ago, I think it was maybe 2007 or 8, something like that, I did a study because I said, well, wow, the deficit's at a trillion dollars. So it had to have been 2008 or 9. The deficit's at a, th at a trillion dollars, but the debt that we're servicing is at $13 trillion. Why? Well, when you go in and you look at they've got it all broken out, if you're not paying principal, all your principal, guess what? You're not really paying all your interest either. So what we have is compounding interest. It's like if you have a credit card and you pay the minimum, so you're not paying any of the principal and you're not even paying all of the interest, that interest now gets tacked onto the principal and you're paying interest, you're compounding that interest. You're paying interest on interest. Do you ever get out of debt when you do that? No, you have to inflate it away or governments do, you and I don't get to do that, but governments have to inflate it away. They have to, they have to. That's why she's saying, we've been fighting inflation that's too low. That's insanity. You need to really understand that inflation is not an absolute in money. In a fiat money system, yes, it's baked into the cake so that they can transfer your wealth. It's an invisible inflation wealth tax, but gold doesn't get inflated away. So in real money, no, inflation is not a necessary phenomenon. In the fiat money system, it is absolutely a necessary phenomenon. And every single time, every single time a central banker says, we have too low inflation, we need more inflation. They're telling you that the purchasing power of your currency is too high and they are going to destroy it. And that is what we work for. 
And some people attempt to accumulate it for future use. All right, I'm going to get back to it. I'm sorry, I'm digressing here. Speaking about taxes, this just came out today, and I just thought it was kind of interesting. Uh, by the way, all the links to everything are over in the blog, so make sure you go. But this is from ProPublica, and talking about how the, uh, let's see, the secret IRS files short form, a quick guide to what we uncovered, and where they showed that billionaires, billionaires, were basically paying, well, here you go. This is from CNBC, wealthiest, who paid zero in federal taxes. Now, they're not saying that happens every year, but they're saying it happens consistently. And listen to this. In 2018, the 25 people at the top of Forbes wealthiest Americans list were worth a combined $1.1 trillion. We calculated that it would take the combined wealth of 14.3 million typical American wage earners to reach that amount. And we certainly know that their wealth has grown exponentially during the pandemic. The 2018 income tax bill for the 25 richest came to a total of $1.9 billion, which is a huge amount, until you see how much the group of wage earners paid in income tax that same year, $143 billion. So you have 14.3 million typical average American wage earners that it takes just to earn as much as the 25 wealthiest Americans, but yet they're paying almost 10 times more in taxes than those billionaires. I don't know, sounds fair to me. And when corporations pay so low taxes, well, what do you think enables the extra dividends, the extra, the extra stock share buybacks, all of this financial engineering and manipulation that leaves most out in the cold. Now look, I know that there's been a huge movement to democratize investment. Well, that happened back in the end of the 20s as well. So I, while on one hand, I definitely applaud it, but people need to be more educated, not just here, go buy stuff on margin and watch AMC <laughs> issue shares of stock go from basically zero to 60 bucks a share in about a heartbeat because people are trading on options uh, with money that the government gave them. Yeah, I'm sorry. We are in a melt-up phase. This will not end well. I'm going to put my neck on the line. This will not end well. And we're not that far from the end. I can't tell you exactly when, but the more insane it is, the closer you and I know we are near, definitely near the end. So I want to look a little bit at, you know, you've seen this before. This is the most current piece on the S&P 500, which is in red, versus the central bank balance sheets. Because the Fed is talking about, oh, I don't know, raising interest rates, tapering their bond purchases, which doesn't mean they're gonna stop, it just means that they're gonna buy fewer. I'm gonna show you that schedule in a second. But going back to the interest rate piece and how Janet Yellen says that would be such a good thing, well, uh, this is just the investment grade debt. We're not talking about leverage loans. We're not talking about high yield debt or any of that, which is much higher than this. But can these corporations, this is debt, 11.3 trillion that is due by 2025. And when you have debt, you either have to service it. So you've got to pay it, make your payments on it, or you have to roll it over or you have to default on it. So you've got $11.3 trillion of investment-grade debt, which may or may not really be investment-grade since we know that the grading services has been a little lenient, particularly in that triple B category, which should be junk-rated. So all that debt has to roll over. Can the Fed, can corporations afford to pay a higher interest rate? I don't think so. 
but they think that if they go at this super slow pace, and they're not even talking about raising rates in here, they can't. Whether it's on our government debt, it's on corporate debt, it doesn't matter. If it were just individual debt, because you know you're paying a whole lot more on any of your debt than governments and corporations are. So they're, they're giving you a possible taper timeline where they will buy just a little bit less of government bonds than they're currently buying. And they're not even saying for sure they're going to do this, but they don't want another taper tantrum. In other words, they don't want the stock market that they have worked so hard to push up to go down. Because every time that has happened here, here when they started slowing down, here when they tried, they made an attempt to taper. There you go. And we're not even talking about margin debt in here. So June to July, they will start to discuss the taper. Just discuss it. We're not doing it. Just discuss it. And then September to November, they're going to announce that they're going to taper. But they're probably not going to do it until January, February. Maybe they will be given, because this is just possible. So if the markets don't like it, then maybe they won't taper. No, they won't taper. When they attempted to taper and roll off their balance sheet, they didn't stop buying. They just stopped reinvesting the dividends for a minute and reinvesting the principal. They just stopped reinvesting as much. And the markets did not like it. Look at how volatile the markets were. That's when they did the pivot. That's when everything changes. But the reality is, is that the money markets, the, the, the global plumbing of the financial markets is breaking down in a big way and has been since September 2019. So when she says, well, that would be a good thing for the public and for the Fed, that interest rates go up, Oh, heck no. Oh, heck no. So they're creating all of this inflation, which I do not believe is transitory. Trading inflation, yeah, like lumber is coming back down from the stratosphere. But that is, but no. You know, I could be wrong about this because clearly it is not within my control. But just like when they went from a target of 2% inflation to an average of 2% inflation, that was to justify what they're doing now because they knew this was coming. And, you know, I just did an interv interview with Daniela Cambone over at Stansbury Research, and she asked me, she asked me some great questions, so you totally want to see that. Um, but, you know, she asked me, why aren't they saying this? And you have to understand whether it's Powell or it's Yellen or it's Biden or it's anybody else that's in government or in the financial sector. They cannot tell you the truth because if they told you the truth, you would make different choices. And that choice would be to pull your wealth out of the system that they have corrupted and are controlling. If you pull your wealth out of the system, they can't steal it from you. Personally, I don't want my wealth stolen from me. I work too hard for it, and I have a family that I really care about. And I'm pretty sure you guys do too. So let's talk about silver for a minute. Because uh, you may or may not know that the United States Mint said that they were postponing issuing Morgan and Peace silver dollars for 2021. And they came in to clarify it because there is a shortage. Oh, really? A shortage on silver. Shocker. And they say 
and you know read this whole thing because this is all from the mint the mint is being impacted by silver blank shortages among its suppliers the demand for many of our bullion and numismatic products is at record heights so demand is at record heights supply is a shortage okay and increasingly outpacing the supply of silver blanks available through our suppliers Kind of like when the silver ETF modified their prospectus because they couldn't get the silver to create their baskets because demand was outpacing supply and you still have silver. Well, the last time I looked today, it wasn't even 28 bucks an ounce. That makes so much sense. And I think that people are really starting to wake up to the fact that this makes absolutely no sense. And therefore, as hidden as the manipulations used to be, maybe they're not as hidden anymore. And I view that as a good thing. We need to wake up while there's still time. Because we, as far as I know, and I didn't check with Eric so I'm sorry about that, but I haven't heard in our meetings that we can't get silver. So we can still get silver. Maybe not the 2021s. Who cares? Silver is silver. Gold is gold. Well, in any form, you want to make sure that you have the physical and it is in your possession so that you own it and you control it because I will just remind you of what they said from that bank for international settlements, which is the central banker, central bank, gold held at home is not subject to political unrest. And it is a great inflation hedge. And it is best known in crisis to protect its holders from being negatively impacted by that crisis. It's true. So gold at not 1900 bucks an ounce when it's easily, its fundamental value is easily somewhere near 20,000. Bargain, bargain, bargain. Get it while you can. Get it while it's still available and get what is available. Because I would always rather be two weeks too early, two years too early, 10 years. I don't really care. I would always rather be early than even one second too late. Because when you are too late, you lose all choice. And if you lose all choice in this one, whatever you have busted your butt to accumulate in all these years, it transfers to somebody that didn't work as hard as you did to accumulate that. And you have to decide if that's okay with you because I can tell you right now, it is not okay with me. So like I said earlier, I did a great interview with Daniela Combone over at Stansberry Research. Um, we had a lot of fun doing it as well and I think you will really enjoy it. And I'm so excited and I'm, I'm, you're gonna see me in the same ensemble, sorry, but because I forgot. But uh, I'm going to be a guest speaker at the Rebel Capitalist Live in Miami uh, this coming weekend. And I'll be sharing behind the scenes on all of my socials. So if you got tickets, come and say hello. I will see you there. I'm planning on being there, really. And, and I don't want to quite say this because it might not actually happen, but I'm going to be around all weekend. So I'm really excited about this and I hope to see you there. But you can see those behind scenes footage on the Instagram at Lynette Zhang or at the twi on my Twitter account at ITM Trading underscore Zhang. And of course, this will we'll also be filming from there on Thursday, right? We're going to do it on Thursday. So I'll have a different ensemble on because... Uh, have access to clothing then. I'm sorry, I forgot to bring it today. So you'll see another one, me wearing this, but all right. So if you haven't already, please thumbs up that you like this and share it. If you haven't subscribed, please do so. Hit that bell. We'll let you know when we're getting lot when we're going live. And uh, until next we speak, remember, 
hundred bazillion percent, it is time to cover your assets. And here at ITM Trading, we use the Wealth Shield, which, by the way, for those that are going to be at George Gammon's event, well, I'm going to be talking a lot more about the strategy there too. So here we use the Wealth Shield based on gold and silver. And until next time, please be safe out there. Bye-bye.